Today we're going to review for your chapter 6 and 7 test. You can see the link for the practice test in Moodle. Underneath it shortly will also be a link to this video. I have a number of tabs open at the top. I have the formula card that you're going to want to have with you with your test next week. You can have this one printed off or you can have a different version of this one, uh, this formula card printed out from inside of your textbook. You're also going to want your handy dandy unit circle and of course you can put some notes on this like maybe we want to around, go around the edges and find all your tangents which is fine. You may also want to make note of where the inverse of sine you know what that domain looks like and the do inverse uh, cos and inverse tan domains look like. Those are also called arc, right? So we can say inverse sine, sine to the negative one it kind of looks like, and we can also talk about arc sine. All of those are the same ways to, to say the same thing. I have pulled your practice test up. There's going to be a couple of multiple choice questions up at the top just to kind of save yourself some writing and it will go in order of the way that we reviewed it in the textbook so all your chapter 6 stuff first and then all of your chapter 7 stuff and you can see that this looks pretty familiar we're going to stay on this PDF for the first couple of questions Now let's go ahead and look at number one. I have an angle that is in partial degrees and I want to change this over to degrees, minutes, and seconds. So I'm going to use my calculator for that. Now of course you could do this by hand, but if you type in 189.47 and then say second apps to pull up the angle me measure and say turn this to degrees, minutes, seconds, it will spit it out for you and you'll have my answer being, oh it looks like D, that was a little sneaky, that's a 189.29, we want 189 uh, and then 28 minutes and 12 seconds, so my answer for number one would be D. Put a D right there. Now I'm going to look at the arc of the circle. Arc length, which is going to be S, is equal to R times theta. Theta needs to be in radians, and right now that's a little bit of a problem because he is in degrees. So I'm going to need to change that over. 60 divided by the 180 is a one-third times pi. So instead of 60 degrees, I can talk about pi over 3. Of course, it's also on your unit circle. It's kind of one of the, the very popular angle measurements we use. So 12.4 times a one-third. Well, actually, I'll just go ahead and say divide by 3 times pi. And I get 12. 9, 8, and change, and we want to round, I'm guessing, to maybe the nearest total angle. And so if we did that, that would be 13, and that would be D. It's kind of a little sneaky. It didn't tell you where to round. I'll be sure to make sure those directions are more clear on the actual test. Another convert angle to degrees, so that's pretty uh, angle from degrees to radian, so 160 times pi over 180. Of course, those zeros can divide out, and I get 16 over 18, also known as 8 ninths times pi, so b. Going the other way, I'm going to multiply by 180 over pi, so that will divide out. 180 divided by 4, so let's see how we get 90 over 2, or 90 times 45, I'm sorry, 7 times 45, and so 7 times 45, 315, so 350 degrees, and I got another D. Staying on this page for a couple of more, we're going to find area. The area is one-half r squared times theta. Theta needs to be in degrees, I'm sorry, in radians, and last time it was in degrees, now we're in radians, so we're good there. So I'll have one-half, I don't know r, so I'm going to have to leave that as r squared, 
and I have my radians as pi over 4, but they gave me the area, and the area is equal to 84. So how about, let's see, where can I put this? I'll put, write it on the other side. That's going to give me r squared pi over 8 equal to 84. Let's double check it real fast, make sure I didn't copy anything over wrong. Looks good. So now I can go ahead and solve. 84 times 8, 672, is equal to r squared times pi. We will divide off pi and take the square root. And I get 14.6 and change. Let's see where they want us to round to. How about to the hundredths? And so I get C, 14.63 meters. Now let's move to our unit circle for number 6 and kind of a little bit off the unit circle for number 7. I have sine of t, but they tell you it is a point on the unit circle. When, so when they tell you it's on the unit circle, you know that your r is 1, and you don't need to worry about verifying that. They're saying, hey, you're on the unit circle, so don't worry about it. So if this is a point on the unit circle and you want to find sine, you know that your sine is your y value, and so that has to be a radical 11 over the 6. And so that needs to just be d. Pretty nice, right? Do not be alarmed if you have lots of D's or lots of C's. I have seen this test generator give um, the same answer choice for like five or six questions in a row. So if you get six C's in a row, don't panic. You're probably not wrong. For number seven, though, notice that it does not say that you're on the unit circle. So if it doesn't say, hey, you're on the unit circle, you're going to need to find the radius. They tend to be very nice questions. I want to find the cosine of this angle, and I'm at the point negative 4, 3. So this is, I think that was number 5. So for number seven, if I'm at a negative 4, positive 3, I am right here. And so to get there, I would have had to go over negative 4, because that's my x, and then go up 3, because that's my y value. So the, you can't just pull out signs, because we don't know what that is right there, what the hypotenuse is. Well, allegedly, we don't know, right? Because we can find that, and we know that this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And you can verify that by just using the Pythagorean theorem. And so, of course, this is going to be a 5. And they said, well, I want to know cosine. And the cosine of this angle is opposite over hypotenuse. No, adjacent over hypotenuse. And so my adjacent is a negative 4 and over my hypotenuse of a 5. And so my cosine is going to be a negative four-fifths. We want to find now cotangent, given that the cosine of an angle is 7 over 25. And they said, by the way, you are in the third quadrant. So if I am in the third quadrant, down here, and I know that my cosine is 7 over 25, that means that my x value is the 7, and my hypotenuse is 25, what I need to find is my y value. So once again, I'm going to use Pythag Pythagorean theorem to find out what that value is. I'll have 25 squared, subtract the 49, and then take the square root. And we have another Pythagorean triple of 24, except it's going to be the negative 24 when we take the square root, right? Because we have to go down like this. Cotangent is the flip of tangent. So if tangent is opposite over adjacent, then cotan is adjacent over opposite. And so here's my angle, and my adjacent is 7, and my opposite is a negative 24. So the cotan of my angle is a negative 7 over 24. 
another day. <laughs> Use transformations to solve, and this will not be multiple choice on your test. I accidentally left this on the practice test, so I'm just going to kind of ignore those examples right there. So we know our sine curve looks like this. We start here at the zero. We peak at uh, pi halves. We go through the x-axis at pi, hit a low at 3 pi over 2, and then you're back at that uh, y-axis, or I'm sorry, x-axis at uh, 2 pi. And so now what I want to do is make my amplitude three times bigger, but I also want to drag this up five units. So instead of wagging over my x-axis, I'm going to wag over this, over the plus five. And from here, I'm not going to stop at an amplitude of one. I need an amplitude of three. So at my pi halves, instead of going only up to six, I'm actually going to go up to eight. By the time I hit pi, I'll be back down here. Back down to the 2 by the time I hit 3 pi over 2. And then when I hit 2 pi, I'll be back at my new 0, which is going to be 5 units above. And that is more than enough. One period is fine. Kind of looks like B to me. Yeah, looks like B. Find the amplitude, the period, and the phase shift. So your amplitude is going to be the easiest. That is the number out front. It will not be negative. Your amplitude is always positive. So those two are gone. My period, well, we'll kind of kind of use the period a little bit. The, that's the frequency that you're looking at. So that by the time you hit um, 2 pi, you'll have done four S curves. And so your period is 2 pi divided by that frequency and then you get pi halves and that kind of saved you a little bit of grief, right? So you know that it has to be C. To find the phase shift, I take this whole piece in here and set it equal to zero. And so I think that's pretty easy to see. You take 4x plus 3 pi and set it equal to zero. You get your negative 3 pi over 4. That also, I think, is not multiple choice. I think I just have it written, have you write it out. Now we're going to move cosine. We have an amplitude and a phase shift, as well as a little bit of a speed up, but we're not going to be above or below the x-axis, so that gives us a little bit of a um, easier graph, I, I think, to, to graph. So my amplitude is 5, so I'm going to have a peak of 5 and a bottom of a negative 5. My period is this omega right here, so that's a 2 pi divided by 4, so once again I'm going to hit a pi halves. So that means by the time I've traveled pi half units, I'll have done 1s. But the thing is I'm not starting at 0, I have this phase shift. 4x plus pi halves is equal to 0. Bring over your pi halves, this is going to be that phi. And so when you divide by the 4, multiply by 1 fourth, you get that you're starting at pi over 8. So it's going to kind of be a little tough to see. I'm going to start them right here, and I'm going to pretend that's a negative pi over 8 because it's a little hard to see. By the time I've gone pi half units, I'll have finished it from there. So had I started at 0, yeah, I would have stopped right here, no problem. Now I know it's going to be a little bit before that, by the time I finish one of these. But I can't just say, well, I, you know, I'm going to do it right about here. i got to say negative pi eighths plus pi over 2. Where do I stop this? So I'll get a common denominator. So times 4, right? So this would be 4 over 8. And so by the time I hit... 3 pi over 8, I'll have done one very fast S. <laughs> so I'll start up here at the 5, and I'll end right there, and then halfway between there, which would be 1 eighth, right, I'll bottom out. So it's a really skinny little cup, oh, oh, like that. 
as it by the time you hit just short of this two pi so what's that 15 pi over 8 by the time you hit here All right because that'd be 1 eighth less than 2 pi you'll have done four of those one period is enough plus because it's still kind of squished up and skinny it's going to be hard to, to, to put it all on there number 12 is going to be a little bit more uh, robust on the test you're going to have to put your scatter plot find it by hand and then also find the line of best fit so by hand we're looking at something where y equals a sine and then they usually write it as omega x minus phi or phi however you want to say it and then they got this plus b so my a value is my highest minus my lowest divided by 2 so 60 minus 16 divided by 2 22 my shift up or down is going to be the mean between those two things so 60 plus 16 divide by 2 38 this you can kind of see this wave it, it's 32 seconds for this wave. so I start at 16 I peak and then I come back down to the 16 so it kind of just looks like this right now so it looks like we'll probably will have repeated this in 64 minutes but since we stopped at the 32 0 to 32 I'm gonna go ahead with uh, Omega being 32 and actually I'm gonna get rid of this so I can still have some space that gives me my period Oh, that gives me the period and so omega is 2 pi divided by that and so I'm going to be talking about the omega being pi over oh 32 not 36 16 okay and then here comes the tricky part so if I put this into stat edit I get 0, 8, 16, 24, 32, now 1, and I got 16, 38, 16, and another 38, 16. At least it's a nice neat curve. And I'm also going to put in what I have so far, which is 22 sine pi over 16. And I'm going to put this in parentheses, this x, uh, just x for right now and then close up the sign and then say plus 38 and I'm going to hit zoom stat and I need to turn on my stat plot there we go okay so here's my peak at the 16 and so I need to scoot this guy over to here so my peak right now is at the 8 right because that's 0 so he needs to go over 8 more units to the right it looks like so let me put into here minus 8 now let's see if that helps oh that's a beautiful thing okay so now I have my model by hand y equals 22 sine pi over 16 open parenthesis x minus 8 close the parenthesis close the bracket plus 38 now 
when we're graphing it, we usually don't have that omega factored out, but it's a lot easier to keep it like that when you're looking for a phase shift. But if I were to run sine reg from stat calc somewhere, where are you sine reg? There you are. You can see that it's not going to look like that. The A and the B were dead on, but that certainly doesn't look like an 8, right? <laughs> that C value. But if you say pi divided by 2, when you distribute this, voila. So this was a very nice and neat one that we wound up with the same exact numbers. Of course, that doesn't normally happen that we get the same thing. But that is how you get that phase shift. You kind of have to use what you have and look at your graph and see where you peek out and kind of scoot him over as needed. That's the end of chapter six. So now the remainder of the test is going to be chapter seven, which is a ton of formulas. The first part of chapter seven looked at arc sine and arc tan and arc cosine and a lot of times I just say inverse later on you'll see arc much more mostly because the notation is a little bit neater arc sine is going to go from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 where cosine is going to go from 0 to pi over 8 so what this says is what angle has the sign of a negative radical 2 over 2 but you have to go where the inverse works where it's defined and so that is this section through here from negative pi over 2 the negative 90 to the positive 90 where is my sine and negative radical 2 over 2 down here at 7 pi over 4 but an extra little trick to it you can't say 7 pi over 4 because that means that you have walked over on this side and you can't walk across the second and third quadrant when you're looking talking about inverse sine you got to put that guy in reverse so if I got to scoop back, I'll have to scoop back pi over 4 units. And so that's going to be a negative pi over 4. If you write 7 pi over 4, am I going to mark you wrong? Yes, because technically you're talking about this angle out here. Where we want to talk about this little angle in here. I know what you mean, but it's not right. So for inverse sine you have to remember to go backwards you have to remember to go backwards and I know it gets a little annoying but you can write your your notes on there so that you can remember in the beginning you know who's who if you want to find an inverse function you do the same thing you did in algebra you swap the X and the Y and you solve for Y these much like in algebra will not look any better when you're done we'll subtract the 5 divide by 4 and then we'll undo the cos by taking inverse cos and so my inverse function is going to be inverse cos of x minus 5 over 4 and that is my f inverse 15 find the exact value what angle has the cosine of a negative 1 half inverse cos cos goes from 0 to pi and so I'm looking for a negative one half here I am at 2 pi over 3 and I believe the question was what is the tangent of that that's sine over cosine which is going to very nicely reduce to a negative radical 3 16 17 18 19 trig functions and equations and it looks like the next one after that is a lovely identity we're gonna need some space for these guys so I am gonna bring this over into smart notebook if you have something like number 16 life is good because it makes us happy when the coefficient of theta is a 1 it means we don't have to worry about speeding up or slowing down our unit circle and we can just kind of solve on autopilot normally these guys are restricted from 0 to 2 pi not including the 2 pi usually the 0 is inclusive and so what I'm going to do for number 16 is I'm going to subtract the 3 to get a negative 1. I'm going to divide by the 2 so I get a negative 
one half and I want to know well all right I got to undo this cos and so what angle has the cosine of a negative one half for these guys when you're solving you're going to take them all I don't have to worry about that whole plus 2 pi k thing because I'm not speeding anybody up and so that 2 pi k is not going to get reduced and as soon as I add in one version of those one k's it's, it's going to kick over so let me go back to the happy little unit circle and look for cosine being a negative one half I got the 2 pi over 3 somebody else and 4 pi over 3 so theta is 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3 that's a nice short one most of the time there's a lot more solutions than just two and they do tend to come in pairs 17 a little bit more involved because I got that too so for number 17 I'm going to divide off the radical 2 which is actually going to be good news although it doesn't feel like it yet because I'm going to rationalize it and that puts me on the unit circle now I'm going to say inverse cos so I get 2 theta is equal to what angle has the cosine of a radical 2 over 2 oh I know this one it is going to be my pi over 4 and then the other guy is the negative pi over 4 that 7 pi over 4 that we were looking at before back here all right and so I'm gonna put him in here 7 pi over 4 alright so now this is what I do I think the textbook does it a little bit different before I divide off that coefficient of theta I split this guy up and I say 2 theta is equal to pi over 4 plus 2 pi k and or 2 theta is equal to 7 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k what the heck is the K? It's going to be those those cycles. How many of those rotations are you doing by the time you hit 2 pi? So it's kind of related to your frequency. Divide off the 2. I get theta is equal to pi over 8. And then I get um, pi K, right? Because this is divided. Now, th another thing that will help you is right away get yourself a common denominator. It will help you with that K. This is going to be 7 pi over 8 and then those twos divide out so I'm gonna make him 8 pi k over 8 again and these are my starters that's kinda of what I call them when k is 0 those are my first round of solutions so pi over 8 and 7 pi over 8 now I have to say well what about when k is 1 that's when k is 0 when k is 1 I use a little subscript you could do it however you want I get pi over 8 plus 8 pi times 1 so 8 pi over 8 and that gives me 9 pi over 8 and I say are you less than 2 pi yes you get to go in the solution bucket over on this side I get 7 pi over 8 plus 8 pi over 8 that's 15 pi over 8 are you less than 2 pi barely but yes so you get to go in the bucket all right let's look at k equals 2 k equals 2 I get pi over 8 plus 8 times 2 which is 16 pi over 8 well, that's 17 pi over 8 too big no going in the bucket this is already almost too big so if I add 2 pi on the 7 pi he's certainly gonna be too big so I'm done and I have four solutions that will work so that, I would say that is um, a medium one now let's look at number 18 okay let's do 19 and 20 also on the other side these are going to be in a quadratic form and then we're also going to have an identity swap out on one of them my quadratic form I, th I think the quadratic forms are a little tricky it's so tempting to want to divide out a sign don't do that you want to set this guy equal to zero as soon as you th see things that are raised to a power of two or greater don't go dividing stuff out set it equal to zero 
So for number 18, I'm going to say 2 sine squared theta, and I'm going to subtract that sine over to the other side and set it equal to 0. I can take out a greatest common factor of a sine. That's OK. And so now I have 2 sine theta minus 1 equal to 0. And you can still use the zero product property. So sine of 0 sine of theta, sorry, is equal to 0, and then I got a 2 sine theta minus 1 equal to 0, solve both. So what angle has the sine of a 0? And there's 2, right? So theta is either going to be a 0 or a pi. And for this one, when I solve, I get sine of theta is equal to a 1 half. So what angles have, sine, uh, have a sine of a 1 half unit circle? Mm, pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. And those are my four solutions. So not too bad. The trick is in that a lot of people want to divide off that sign and it, you only get half that way. So it kind of throws it off. This guy. I got a sine squared theta equal to a 5 cos uh, plus 5 after I distribute, which I'm going to do right now. We don't like sines and cosines all mixed up together. It kind of screws everybody up. So I'm going to take that sine squared out, and I'm going to put cos squared in, because then I'm going to be able to factor this guy. And I'm going to do that using my most favorite Pythagorean theorem is sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1 squared. So if I subtract sine, or actually if I subtract cos from both sides, I'll get sine squared is equal to 1 minus cos squared. So I'm going to take that sine squared out and say 1 minus cos squared instead of the sine squared. So I'm going to use a Pythagorean identity. Cos theta plus 5. Of course, I have that thing squared, so that means you got to set this thing equal to 0. I'm going to bring him to the right so that I can keep that coefficient positive. Cos squared plus 5 cos theta. I lost my little dash. Subtract the 1, so he's going to be a plus 4, and that worked out beautifully. Factors of 4 that add up to a 5. 1 and 4. I wrote squared. I need it just regular, right? So cos theta plus 4, cos theta plus 1. Set each piece equal to 0 and solve, and I'll get caught. Where is my cosine equal to a negative 4? No place. The biggest thing that you can have is a 1 or a negative 1. So he's dead. He's just extraneous solution. Where is my cosine equal to a negative 1? Only at pi. So all that work for one little solution. Okay, almost done. Hang in there. We're going to do our identity, and then we're going to do some formulas. Let's bring the identity to the other side. Now, in the homework and on the videos, I said you may want to do the identities before you do the equations. I think it's easier that way to kind of keep yourself from crossing this barrier, but when it says establish the identity, that means you don't get to go over this. There is a wall here, and you can't add or subtract. All you can do is swap out identities. So you have a couple of different ways that you can approach these types of problems. You can change everybody to sine and cosine, but you may want to start when you see stuff squared with that famous one that we just used, which is sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1. Now, I want this thing to be equal to a cotan. And cotan is cos over sine. And so if I divide everybody by a sine squared, That's going to give me a 1 plus cotan squared equal to, this is cosecant squared. Oh, well, look at that. All right, so I got a cosecant squared here. Don't really want that. Rather have the cotan. So I'm going to kick him out and put 1 plus cotan in. 1 plus cotan squared. 
And then I got this cos, and how convenient that secant is 1 over cos. And anything over itself divides out. And so now I have 1 plus cotan squared minus 1, also known as cotan. Oh, I changed my u to a theta. And that's it. You're done. There's numerous ways that you can approach this. This just happened to be the shortest. It's much like factoring. It just takes practice. You see enough of them, you start to, to recognize the tricks. Now to some formulas. The second half of 7 were all formulas. So I have, I want to find the cosine of 5 pi over 12, and then I got some double angle, half angle, product of sum, and then sum to product. This one, 21, I actually find is the type of questions I give students a hard time usually. What you want to do is use what you have on your unit circle to kind of make up a sum, right? So it's kind of like you want to undo this addition and say, well, what, what's another way that I could talk about this cosine? Well, let's see. I think if I say 3 pi over 12 and 2 pi over 12, right? That's 5 pi over 12. And then I can simplify that, and that becomes pi over 4 on the unit circle. That's what you want and pi over 6, also on the unit circle. Yay! So there's my winners. He's going to be alpha, he's going to be beta. And so I'm going to use a sum formula. There are other ways that you can do this. I, that's just happened to be what I saw. I'm going to go to the formula card, if I can track him down, and go to my sum Here he is, right over here. Cos of alpha plus beta is cos cos sine sine. So cos alpha cos beta minus sine alpha sine beta. The cosine of pi over 4 is at radical 2 over 2 and so is its sine. Pi over 6 I don't know off the top of my head so let's head over to the unit circle. The cos is a radical 3 over 2 and then a half. three, and then a half. And so I have radical six over four minus a radical two over four. And I am totally fine with radical six minus radical two over four. I am sure in the answer key they factored out that radical two. Not necessary. It's cool just the way that it is. These are not going to look nice. You're going to see a lot of the same numbers though. So don't be surprised if like you do four of them that have radical sixes and radical twos in them. Double angle and half angle are a lot shorter. And I have the cosine in the third quadrant and I want to find sine of two theta. So if I want to find sine of two theta, that one I actually happen to remember sine of 2 theta is 2 times sine theta cos theta. Not sure why I remember that one, but that one I always remember. I'm given the cosine down in this third quadrant, and it is 5 over 13. So I know that this is a 5. My Radius is a 13. I need to find this. And if I remember correctly, that Pythagorean triple is a 12. So 13 squared minus 25, and it is. So my sine of this angle is opposite over hypotenuse times the cos, which they gave me. And so that is going to be 60, right, times 2, 120, over a 169. That one's short. Half angle. For the half angle, what you need to do is make sure that you're still in the correct quadrant after you're done.
And so we are going to pull up that formula card for my half angles. There they are. And we are looking for, if I'm given the sine in the third quadrant and I got a negative three fix, fifths, find the sine of a half. Okay. okay. So sine of the half angle. And I'm down here. And I have a negative three fifths. I know that this is a four because it's the Pythagorean triple, or you can check it. Now, if I'm in the third quadrant of a 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, and I half this guy the whole way through, that's going to stick me now into 3 fourths, and then the half of that guy is going to be in the pi. So now I am in from 3 pi over 4 to pi. So now I'm like over here. And that sign is positive. Let's get our formula back. Sine of a half is 1 minus the cos over 2. Take the square root of it. And because I need it to be up in the quadrant that would have a positive sign, then I'm going to take the positive square root. 1 minus cos divided by 2, divided by 2. And we are going to need our cosine, uh, which we just had to find. That's going to be a 4 fifths, so minus 4 fifths over 2. Let's multiply everybody by the 5. So I'll get 5 minus 4 over a 10, known as a radical 1 over 10 or I'm sorry, radical 1 over a radical 10. I'm going to split it. And then when I rationalize, how about radical 10 over 10? So not too terrible. Two more, two more. We want the product as a sum. And then we're going to want the difference as a product. The only thing you have to watch out for are those odds and evens. So I have sine times cos. Sine times cos. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Sine times cos. So it's going to be at one half out front. Then I'm going to add them. And then I'm going to subtract them. They're both sine. So we will have a one half. Sine. Add the two together. That's 11 pi. Divide by two. No, just 11 pi. And then... We are going to say plus and subtract. And so I'll get a negative a theta in there. And so what I have to remember is that sine is an odd. So if it is negative on the inside, I can pull it out. And so I'll actually have a negative 1 half sine. 11 theta, well actually, we'll move that plus and then have that minus sine theta there. Going the other way, I have sine 3 theta minus the sine, so sine sine, and they're both a subtraction. I would say 2 sine, find the difference, cos, find the sum, and these are the ones that are divided by 2. So 2 sine, find the difference, and then divide by a 2. So that would be negative 2 over 2, and so just a negative 1 theta. Mm -hmm. And then the second part of that formula is cos, add them together. 8 and then divide by 2, so 4. Again, that he is an odd, so I'm going to factor that out and I get negative 2 sine theta cos 4 theta. And that is your test.